on it a bit. Still waiting for the plastics. So um, I thought I need to get everything else absolutely buttoned up. So literally it's just put the fairing on, put the tank on, front my guard, give it a rip down the road. Right, so I'm gonna start at the back and work our way forwards and finish off all these shitty little jobs that I've been putting off. So um do the back light. Um obviously with old electrics it's always worth before you put everything back together, just um just make sure everything's working. This is me little uh, bits for me back light. So, in there sits these little collars, and they go in from the back. Couple of M6 flange nuts. These ones are stainless, so because I can't find the originals, and it's not a full nut and bolt restoration, so all you rivet counters can go and do one. So what those little rubber mounts do is they help this stop the vibration from the bike transferring into that. Yeah, I know it's got a little crack in it, but I don't care. So next job, um, I'm gonna fit the drive chain. One drive chain. Um, I'm not gonna replace it yet. That one's in very good nick, believe it or not. It's a bit dirty. I gave it a quick flush with a bit of petrol just to get the crap off of it. First thing I'll do is take that cover off. So, front sprocket cover. Just so we can access the front sprocket. Start at the back. So these links can be a bit tight. So I use my um, proper mole, mole grips. Check them out. Okay, so you just need to get it past where that little groove is. Yeah, I think I will trade to a new split link one day. I'm just going to run it in with this chain on and then I'll put a new chain and sprocket kit on it. For the moment, I just want it on the road. So with these, I don't know, most people know, but the split link, it goes, so the open part of the link is at the back, so facing the back of the bike. And the reason that is, so if you put it on the other way, if that catches on anything, that will throw the link off. But this way around it can't. So that is one chain installed. But as you can see, it's like a wet sock. That's technical term it is. Chain like a wet sock. 
No, this is all loose, there's nothing, it's all just finger tight. So what we'll do is just wind the adjuster back a bit. Don't go too mad. I just want to get it off the exhaust for a minute. Right, so if we look on here, that's between the second and third notch. So I'm just going to check on the other side, make sure that's somewhere near. So on here you can see it's between the first and second. So this has got to, we've got to straighten the wheel up a bit before we do the final, the final tension. Doggo, what are you doing? So now we've straightened the wheel up, you can see that that is almost, well, I'd say it's pretty much there. And the way I set them up, you can get two fingers underneath it. That ain't far off where it needs to be. So that silkiness. Right. Chains on. Right, so we'll put a front chain guard back on. Which is just two bolts. Everything in there looks good. Cable's out of the way. Right, another thing that was missing, which I've repaired this morning, which I won't bother doing on camera, but I needed a, didn't have a neutral switch wire. So I've um, I made a new link wire. So it just comes from there up here and I've joined it to the original. So it's a light green wire that goes up. It's through the oil level switch and then brings your oil level light on you when you neutrals on as well. So that's all done. Right, next job. So I've already run a, a M6 tap in these just to get a paint out. Right, so that's that done. So there's one job, there was one thing that was preventing me from getting all this switch gear on. And that was, well there was two things actually. Every set of switch gear you can find on the internet has not got a choke lever with it. And a choke lever is like rocking horse shit. But it just so happens Look at that, eh? So I managed to source myself an OE, still in the bag, genuine Kawasaki parts. Look at that. That cost me the princely sum of about eight pounds because it come all the way from Thailand. So I'm well pleased with that. So what that enables me to do then is get all this switch gear sorted out. And the other thing was I had no choke lever and the choke cable was broke. And the choke cable again, the rail was rocking all shit. People just want fucking stupid money for things and it's ridiculous. So I'm not gonna subscribe to all that rubbish, you know, I, you know I'll, I'll just make one myself. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'll show you what I've got on the bench and I'll show you how we're going to do it. That's the choke cable that come with the bike. And that opens these two little plungers, one in each carb. So as you can see, there's a bit missing. OK, 
Okay, but it's not just the nipple that's missing. It's all this bit as well. So what I've done is I've purchased a, I think this is a ZXR 400 choke cable. So the end is totally different, but that end is right. Okay, so that end's correct. It's slightly longer. So if you offer them up, the adjuster's in a slightly different place. But it's literally sort of two inches longer, which is not a problem. So what I'm going to do is graph the top half of the ZXR 750 or 400, whatever it's off of, into the two and a one part, which is still all right. And then what we should have is a complete usable choke cable. So we'll crack on with that. So the first thing I need to do, which I've already measured it, but what you need to do is find out by putting that in there, putting that in here, so the, the choke lever part sits in the bottom half of this. <coughs> What you need to do is, is figure out how much of the cable actually goes into when that's all in at home like that. And that's shut. Because what you don't want to do is cut either too much or too little and have to do it again. So that's in its home position. So that's obviously choke off. Cable at its longest point. So all, I'm, all I've done is I've took a marker pen and I've marked this end of the cable. Okay, so there's a little black mark on there. You can barely see it. But that tells me where that cable sits when the choke is off. Okay? Mm -hmm. So on here, you can see it a bit better now. That black, black line there so with it here, like that, that is where the cable's going to sit when the choke is off. So when you pull that choke lever, that cable's going to disappear up there. So we just needed to know. And also the adjuster is fully wound in as well. So what we can do is make it quite slack and then take it up on the adjuster. So let's crack into this. and get it apart without breaking it. Like that. So in here, one cable pulls two. Look. So I do that, pull the spring back. Here's a conveniently placed container, look. Kill a dog in there again. All right. All right, we're going to have to approach this slightly differently because this has all been manufactured. So this this one cable here, you can't get it. You can't get them plungers past. So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder these nipples, which is what I didn't want to have to do, but there we go. Can't see any other way around it. And then we'll reattach them. Because I need to get these, all of this out so I can get the new cable in. So we'll do that. So that's the bit we needed to get to. So that is the old cable. So what we need to do now is figure out how long that bit of the cable needs to be. <coughs> so we assume that that 
sits in there like that. And if you haven't got enough inner, then you can always cut a bit of the, this bag, but I don't really want to do that because it's got a nice original crimped ferrule on there, so. So I'll just cut the old nipple off. So I'll set, the, set that where it needs to be, which is there. Stick that on there. So with that like that, that like that, we can see where roughly how long that cable needs to be, which is, I'm going to do it just with a little bit of clearance. I don't want to make it too short. So, where, where the solder is, it's just you can feel it, there's a little edge on there. It ain't going to slide through very well. So just very carefully. So we'll put the bottom half in. So, that's that. so now what I've got to do is we've got to attach, we'll put that through there. Now, I've got to solder a little nipple on there. So I turned myself up a little, little brass nipple. Isn't she a cutie? Right, I'll try it with some standard solder. If that won't take, then I'll use some silver solder. Sort that is. Right, find something to cool that down. Otherwise I'll burn my fingies. Okay, so we have got a new nipple. Okay, so then, now we can start reassembling it. Put these in, you poke them in there first, look. Because they hook over here. Before I snap that shot forever. A little bit of grease in there. Just helps things along. Right, so these are already tinned. So they've already got solder on them. So they should solder up with normal lead solder. But I just want to get them clean. So disappearing. So now these have been resoldered. They seem to work. Hopefully if I've got me, I think, 
length why cover in a minute so you know, put that bit in there make sure that's cable sitting in there properly so I'll put it in the choke lever first so now all of that without letting that bit fall out take the weight off of that. Now there's a little pip in there and that locates in the handlebar, stops it rotating. Which is there. Make sure the cable's done. What I need now is a couple of screws just to chuck in there. These are just temporary until I can find the proper ones. They'll do for now. Right, moment of truth. So I think we may have to take the slack out on the... Check that choke action. So there's a, there's a bit of slack there we need to just take out with the adjuster. But I say, that ain't free bad that. So the most important thing is when that's forward, these two little rubber seals seat against the, the choke bits in the carb. So we'll put these in. I'm gonna root it down this side. They don't have to be mega tight because they've got a little o-ring on the top. Obviously you don't want air leaking in but I wouldn't put a spanner on them really because um, they're only really like a lightweight plastic thread on them and you can very easily strip them. Okay. And now that I should have a little three-way clamp on there. I'll see if I can find that in my box of bits. No is the answer to that. test for an air leak on the inlet. Right, so I know it runs, ticks over, seems to be alright, so I'm just going to check if there's an air leak around the inlet. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm not going to try not to set fire to it, but I'm just going to puff some gas around there. If the revs increase, then we should, we know we've got an air leak. So the air mixture is out on the pilot screw, but that's all just setting up really. So, <clears throat> drive chain's done, um, rear light's all done, 
who runs headlights or I've checked that so literally petrol tank fairings and I can take it for a spin so come on Bob sort your life out and get me plastic sorted thanks for persevering um, these videos are uploaded in sort of real time so it's not like this was completed like two years ago and we're just creeping the the videos onto the internet um, literally there we go so every time I've got enough to do then I'll come out and do a video but literally we are on the final leg I am literally just waiting for the bloody bodywork and to say I'm, I am a bit pissed off to be fair but there you go can't be helped at the moment so hopefully it'll, it'll come good and we'll manage to uh, get this project completed thanks for persevering with it um, hopefully you've uh, <clears throat> got some little tips out of it but overall I think what people might take away from it is um, no one's ever going to get rich restoring motorbikes because you can just look at the amount of man hours that have gone into this 18 months work you know if you condensed it down into hours but even then it's still you know it's not worth doing unless it's for your own you know unless it's your own bike and you generally have a you know a love or a passion for them so, so hopefully fingers crossed um the next video will be it'll be a bit more complete so yeah literally i'm just waiting for body work and a petrol tank so thanks for watching please like and subscribe um turn your notifications on because then that will let you know when i upload a video and um yeah leave us a comment i do enjoy reading them thanks for watching